Good morning. Welcome to GNN. And the, well, no, it's not. It's Sunday of Silence. How many of you normally come at 8.30? Yeah, some of you do. It looks like the day has already been over for a while for you guys, right? Yeah, so. Some of you said, somebody said, I feel like I'm in a foreign country up here, but this is a great place to be. Welcome to Donut Sunday, and uh, it's a good day. Yeah, some of you like the donuts, so that's a good thing. Got a couple of announcements that we want to lift up before we get our worship started. I want you to get out your bulletin. A couple of things I wanted to lift up for you there. First of all, I want to remind you that uh, tonight our activities are, are canceled because today is our Sunday of Silence. And we're hoping that you've taken advantage of this to uh, set your calendar, do some things with your family, friends, and neighbors, get to know somebody maybe new and different, and spend some time connecting them to Jesus Christ and you with them. And that's an important thing. I want to remind you, tomorrow morning, the Mountain Mission truck's going to be here, and if you've got something you want them to have, bring it over and uh, put it on the lighthouse uh, front steps, and uh, that'd be good. But also, don't forget, friends, the 127 yard sale, our youth, uh, their big, big uh, money raiser for the year begins this week as well. And uh, we'll be collecting things for that. So make a note of that. I want to remind the United Methodist Women Executive Committee meeting committee that you all have a meeting not tomorrow, but Tuesday at 7 o'clock. So that's a correction from the bulletin. It's not tomorrow, but it's uh, Tuesday at uh, 7 o'clock or whatever it was. Am I saying that right, Arba? Okay, but it's, t it's Tuesday at 7, so I want to be sure I got that right. Everybody got a green envelope? You see those around? Today is Fifth Sunday. It's always our normal offering for the Kentucky United Methodist Children's Home. And uh, if you uh, would care to make a donation to that, we would love to receive it. Just drop it in that green envelope, and we appreciate it. Uh, all of that as well. Look at all the announcements that are in your bulletin. Lots of great things happening here at church and around the community. Um, I wrote down here church directories. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, no. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Once worship is over, as you go downstairs in Gallery Hall, uh, Carolyn Nemeth and, uh, will be there. She'll be passing those out. Uh, those of you that had your pictures made, you get first dibs. That's kind of the way it works. And uh, so go by, pick up your ch new church directory. Got lots of great things in that, and so don't forget it. All right, let's uh, stand and let's greet one another. As you look around today, you may see several people that you don't know, remember their name. You've seen them before, but I can't think of their name. Go up to them and ask them their name. Tell them your name. Get to know one another. We do have guests with us today. We're especially glad to welcome all of our guests and uh, just sit back, relax, and enjoy our worship time today. If you'll notice our uh, altar table today is decorated. We're talking about God's love and call. And uh, what a special day this will be as we hear from some, some folks uh, throughout the congregation. As we talk about today a little bit about what uh, God means to us, what our church means to us, what is our call from God? You notice on the table there we have a trumpet. Uh, you know, the, it's, it could be Gabriel's trumpet, or, you know, we in Kentucky know that as a call of the post. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but uh, God can use any means to call. There are bells there, the dinner bell is ringing. Anyway, and of course, our cross. Our cross calls us into service, into action. And we give thanks for that. Um, let's just be in an attitude of prayer. I want to want to mention a prayer concern. A lot of you may remember David Hilton. David uh, was our past pastor here, and I. If you have not heard the news, I'm, I'm sad to say that David passed away on Friday, and uh, we want to remember uh, his family, you know, Mary Lois, and the and, the, and his children. And family and let's remember them today okay let's worship the Lord Alleluia 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. 
it. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. 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 Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Hallelujah. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, Alleluia. His mercy endures forever. Alleluia. Let us sing Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The right hand of God is exalted. Alleluia. The right hand of God is struck with power. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but I shall live. Hallelujah. And declare the works of God. Hallelujah. Let us sing Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected Hallelujah. has become the cornerstone. Hallelujah. By the Lord has this been done. Hallelujah. It is wonderful in our eyes. Hallelujah. Let us sing Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Today we are ooh, there we came on. Today we are celebrating Promotion Sunday, and uh, this week is uh, the the city schools start, and next week the county schools start. So uh, we picked this day as a day to celebrate. And as uh, many of you realize, we do our third grade Bibles. Raise your hand if you got a third grade Bible when you were growing up. It is a Methodist tradition from I don't know how long ago, but. Uh, First, we're going to present our Bibles, and I want those children to stay up here, and then eventually we'll have everybody up here for something. So uh, our third grade Bibles, Joe Gaddis. <laughs> Formerly known Alexander Goins, Joseph Gaddis, and Alexander Goins, come on up. Houston Hancock, Grayson Scott, here he comes, Addison Trent, and Kelsey Wilhoyt. I've marked a place with a fancy uh, torn piece of paper. I meant to get, I forgot to go get the bookmarks out of the room. But they're going to open their Bibles to where I have marked. And Dr. Phil will help at that end. We'll help them find the verse. We're going to look at Psalm 119, verse 105. So I'm going to make sure everybody's got it before we start. While there, um, I'll let Dr. Phil show everybody, 119, 105. While they're getting ready, um, I'm going to uh, talk to you all a little bit about your Bibles. We give third grade Bibles because that is a time when you are better at reading, because Bibles are hard to read with the columns and everything. So that is one reason. Um, another reason is that we want you to realize that this book is so, so very special. We pick the uh, Common English Bible, which if you're in the, in the market for a new Bible, it's a wonderful version. It is the version that the Sunday School curriculum uses, um, and it is, it is very, very well done. 
I, very, I really uh, am enjoying reading mine. But uh, what I want you all to know is the Bible is a very, very important book. John Wesley, who founded the Methodist movement, said that he wanted to be a man of one book. So he wanted this book to be more important than any other book. Now, that's hard for us to understand. Even some of us adults, we don't, we don't read the Bible like we should. But I want to tell you that there are things in there. There are stories of people that have made a difference because they let God lead them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. There are stories, there are verses. If you look in the Psalms, you, there is nothing that you could ever think or say that isn't in the Bible. Isn't that true, Dr. Phil? If you are very, very angry, there's a place in there for you to read. If you're very, very happy, there's a place in there for you to read. If you're very, very sad, there's a place in there for you to read. And I want all of us, all these adults especially out there, I want all of us to vow that we're going to do better at getting into our Bible so that we can show you how to get into your Bible. But what I want you to do is look at verse 105, and we're going to read that together. Right there. Has everybody found it? If you need help, raise your hand. And uh, Everybody's good? Okay. So I'm going to just kind of hold the microphone past you all while you read it so that nobody has to read alone. But you're going to read it together, okay? So this is Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamb before my Let's read it again. Your So what I want us to take that verse and to realize that the Bible can guide us. Even the parts we don't understand, Dr. Phil and I are still trying to figure out parts, aren't we, Dr. Phil? There are parts in the Bible that are just hard to understand, but I want to challenge you. And I always, you all remember, every year I challenge, let's all bring our Bibles, start bringing our Bibles to church, because we give them to our kids and then we don't have ours. <laughs> So I would challenge all of us to start bringing our Bibles to church and encourage our children to do the same. So let me have a prayer for you, and then I want you all to stay up here because we're going to add more people. Dear God, I thank you for these third graders. I thank you for their, their learning to read, and I thank you for them learning about you through this church and at home. I ask that you help them remember to look to this Bible and put people in place to help show them places that will help them as they grow. We thank you for what they teach us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want you all to stay here. Um, now, Promotion Sunday, we're getting ready to start a new Sunday school year, and we're getting ready to start school, so we're combining Promotion Sunday and Blessing of Our Backpacks, and I know we've got at least two children from Florida, so they are allowed to come up too. Even though they're not coming to our schools, they're going to their schools. So if you're a visitor, feel free to come up as well. But I'm going to introduce... Our Sunday school classes and teachers, and as I introduce, if you'll just, uh, children will come up. So if you are, uh, I know we have one nursery kid, Eli. If you are in the nursery, if you'll come on up. Our nursery workers are in flux, so if you know of anybody that would like a job on Sunday morning, I would love to uh, have, have them talk to me. But Eli's representing his class. If you're going to start to preschool this year, I want you to come on up. So three-year-olds and four-year-olds, come on up here with me. And bring your backpack if you have it. Come on up, Ellie. If you're going to start to kindergarten, come on up. Um, Miss Shelley is up here. I see her. So come on up, Miss Shelley. And then our, our preschool kindergarten class is taught by Holly Brunson, who's already up here, and Mary Pat Dobbins. Uh, first and second grade, if you're going to first grade or second grade, come on up with your backpack. And their teachers are April Trent and Barbara and Brandon Mathis this year. So if they would come on up. And third grade is actually going to be with that. Third graders come up too. I forgot. Third graders are going to be in this group. So if you're going into third grade, they're already up here, aren't they? Um, 
You can get your backpack if you want, Alex. Um, fourth and fifth grade, come on up. James Hale and uh, to be decided teacher in that class, fourth and fifth. Our middle school class, if you're going to start middle school this year, come up because you deserve to come up alone. Going into sixth grade, come on up. <laughs> Seventh and eighth graders, come on up. And your teachers are Tim and Allison Simpson. If you're starting high school, ninth grade, come on up. Tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, come on up. And their teacher is Sarah Gaddis, come on up. Now here's, here's one that maybe might choke me up. If you're starting to college this year, come on up. I may be close to at least one of them. <laughs> How exciting this is. I also now want to in invite all our school, if you teach school, come on up. Whether it's elementary, middle school, high school, I want all teachers up here. <laughs> Staff and administration as well. If you work for our schools, private, public, come on up. I know at least one teacher is starting in a new school besides Miss Ellie. Anybody else starting in a new school? Bro, oh, Brandon. Oh, a brand new teacher, Brandon. He's going to start kindergarten this year. All these people have a lot going on to get ready. I know some of them are excited, some of them are scared, some of them are maybe a little bit sad. But whatever, whatever it is, we want to tell you as our church that we are excited for you and we will be praying for you. I would like to ask the congregation to lift your hand toward all these people as I lead us in prayer. Loving God, we think about growing up and going to school and the excitement of, of um, new, new things in our backpacks. Some of us didn't have backpacks. Some of us had other things that we carried to school. But we thank you for these children. We uh, realize that their backpacks are going to go back and forth from school to home. There are going to be notes in there from teachers to parents and back and forth. There are going to be papers that they've done well on and maybe papers they need to work on. There are going to be new supplies and then later broken pencils, broken crayons. But, God, you are with them this whole year, and we lift this up to you, God. I lift up all our teachers here at the church. I lift up our Sunday school teachers. I lift up all the teachers these children, youth, and young adults will have this, this new year. And we ask that you give them wisdom, give them guidance, give them a sense of your peace, Help them realize that you are with them. And if they, help them be good friends to, to people in their class. Help the, the teachers realize what, what each child needs and how overwhelming I know that can be. But God, just give them insight and wisdom into doing your will. And we thank you for the ministry of teaching. And we ask that you help us as a church encourage our children, our youth, our young adults, and our teachers so that they may serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we hear in our scripture two very powerful stories about love and about God's call. I want to ask Cleland, no, I'm asking, who's doing the first one? Melissa is the first one. I ask Melissa Toppis to come and share with us the Old Testament lesson. It's also found in your bulletin, if you want to turn to that and follow along. We're in 1 Samuel in chapter 3 today. Melissa? Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. 
The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone dark, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, he said. Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the things that we want to do today is pray. And, um, you know, friends, as we pray, this great uh, congregation gathered together, it's important that we consider the fact that we are a family in this place. And there's great power here in prayer. And so today as we pray, I want to invite you to uh, maybe just uh, join the hands of your neighbor, if you will. We have some other things thinking about doing, but we're a large group. And so I'm going to ask just if you'll just reach over and touch the hand of your neighbor. And uh, I'm going to give you some guidance as we pray and then... Uh, and then, uh, and I'm going to invite you to pray uh, silently, uh, maybe even offer an, a, a, a louder prayer if you would like. I'll give that up to you. But involve the children in this. I want all the children and the youth be sure to grab their hand as well. Don't don't exclude anybody in this. Our uh, we have a group that's going to call us back to uh, to our prayer time when, and you'll hear the song they'll sing. And then I'm going to ask you to pray for another petition of prayer. Let's hear the song that uh, we'll sing together.
As we begin to pray, I want you to pray for a prayer of gratitude for everyone that's gathered here today. Pray for the person that's sitting on your right and then the person who's sitting on your left. Pray a prayer of encouragement. Let us pray for those who may be hurting now, physical illness, wounded in some way. We pray for the grieving. Together, let us pray for our world, for its people and its leaders. Mighty and loving God, hear the prayers of your faithful as we gather in this place today. We do give you thanks that we can be here and thank you for the joy and celebration of worship and the opportunity we have to glorify you. You have heard our prayers today. Thank you, O Lord, for your blessing and continue to bless us now as we join our voices and we share together the prayer you taught your own disciples to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, let your kingdom come. Hallelujah. Thank you. I want to invite our ushers to come forward now as we worship the Lord by offering our gifts and our tithes in celebration of all that God has done.
softly and tenderly Jesus is calling Calling to you and to me Loving and patient He's waiting and watching Watching for you and for me Come home Come home Ye who are weary Come home Softly, tenderly Jesus is calling Calling, oh sinner, come home. So Lord, help us to hear you. Open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to your will. Oh, Lord, help us to hear And help us to walk with you all of our days without fear Oh, Lord, help us to hear Open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to your will. Dear Lord, help us to hear you. Oh, speak loudly, Lord. We need to listen. We beg you, speak loudly, Lord, we need to listen to Him. Mighty and loving God, as we uh, now prepare to hear the word, we pray that your blessing fall upon us. We thank you for the opportunity to give of ourselves to pray, and you heard our prayers. We thank you for the voices that sing. We thank you, O oh God, for the gifts that have been given. Now, oh God, let us listen closely, as Michael just talked about, sang about. Help us to hear you. Help our ears to be open, our eyes to be open, our heart to be open and receptive to your word. It's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I want to ask Cleveland White to come and share with us the New Testament lesson. It too is found in your bulletin, and we're, today we're reading from, uh, from the New Testament in the Gospel of John. I just want to ask you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethesda. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good from, come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me, Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, 
You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. These are the words of God for the people of God. the call. Some weeks ago our youth went to Lake Junaluska for a week of camp and um, in that process they had a powerful experience. One uh, which uh, expressed great love and the other was about this call. And today as we gather together we want to think about God's call on all of our lives. I like to say that uh, there's only one preacher at First Church, but there are lots and lots of ministers. And that's the truth. I think, uh, as I'll say again, every one of us has been called in some way, some fashion. Today I want to share some thoughts with you through you. And uh, you'll see what I mean in just a moment, but uh, I want you to begin to think about your call. What is God calling you to do? Maybe a little odd. I, I know some of your stories, and I hope you'll be willing maybe to share them this morning. But to get us started today, I've ax asked Alex Hardison to come and share with us uh, some thoughts that he has on his heart about God's love and uh, so forth. And let's, uh, let's welcome Alex as he comes. He's a bit nervous, so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're home, brother, so don't be nervous, okay? Oh, that's the worst bunch in the world to preach to. <laughs> Alex, glad you're here, man. Bless you. Hello, my name is Alex Hardison, and I'm here today to talk about love. I was reading the Bible and trying to figure out a verse for this little spiel, which spiel by definition means a long or fast speech, typically one intend intended as a means of persuasion or as an excuse, but regarded with skepticism or content by those who hear it. <laughs> so, depending on your relationship with God, you could be skeptic or content about Jesus' love. But our whole religion is based on John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believed in him may not perish but have eternal life. Now, we have to realize the scripture says God so loved the world, not so God, not God so loved this little group over here, or all the popular people, or all the people who give the most money to church. So we have to understand God loves us all equally, so we have to treat everyone equally, because God sees us all as equals, and so does Jesus. 
So if we aren't treating everyone with respect and sharing love to our brothers and sisters, then are we really Christians? Now, this is very easy for me to say because love is the easiest emotion for me to express. And that is all for my loving interpretation of God and my parents telling me they love me every chance they get. And even people from this church have helped me understand how powerful love truly is. And I know that if I can love them, and I know that I can love them, and they will love me back. So if the church can have open hearts, open minds, and open doors, then we will really be loving the way that Jesus intended his church to love. Now how about some ways we can show glory to God with our love? Now, people, it's the little things that really add up. So simple actions like holding the door, carrying groceries to a car for someone, saying hello to someone you've never met before, or even smiling at someone when you're walking by. So I want to encourage you all to do five nice things every day. And I know some of you are going, I don't know if I can do that, Alex. <laughs> That's a lot more nice things than I can do in a week. But you know how small a number five is? It can just fit on one hand. Now, that's five things in 24 hours. So that's one nice thing every four hours and 48 minutes. Which I find ironic because in John 4:48 it says, Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. So we have to show everyone love just like God loves us because we are the signs and the wonders that will make people believe and come to know our Heavenly Father as we know Him. So on a closing note, I'm going to give you some scripture. 1 Corinthians 13:13. 13, 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Thank you. Wow. Well, that about do it for today. Thank you. No. <laughs> no, our response is important, and, the, and I appreciate that. I, I was thinking while Alex was talking, you probably don't realize this about me, but 47 years ago, two weeks ago, that makes sense? 47 years ago, two weeks ago, I preached my first sermon, and I was scared to death. Mine wasn't as long as yours, though. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Friends, as we, uh, as we gather today, there are lots of stories in, our, in this place. And I want you to take a few moments to think about what is it that God has called you? Where, where is your calling? And everybody is different. But as Alex said so well, it's in our response to that call. Five things a week. No, you said every day. Wow, that's a challenge. That's a good one. Yeah. So I'm going to give you just an opportunity to share, um, uh, just for a moment, uh, if you have something you would like to share with the congregation about maybe God's call on your life for a moment. Anybody? Anybody willing to do that? Debbie? You might introduce yourself. I'm Debbie Ison, and I'm the lay leader of the church. And we're trying to organize our inreach program, and we've had such a wonderful response from so many of you. And it's wonderful to know that we're serving all over the world, all over the state, and all over our community, but now we're serving within our own doors. People who can't get to the grocery, people who can't get to a doctor's appointment, or someone who just needs a good visit or a communion brought to them, or maybe their light bulbs change or their furnace filters taken care of. We're going to be doing that. So about September we'll be starting. We're doing training now. And it's just something that was put on my heart that we need to serve our seniors as well as those outside of our doors. Thank you. Yeah, Debbie, thank you. Anybody else? Someone else? Tanya's heading to the back there. Go, girl. She can run faster than I can. <laughs> I, I uh, would like to basically give a praise. I was diagnosed with cancer with leukemia a few years back, and it's been a slow-progressing, long, drawn-out thing. 
And then recently, uh, in December, I was diagnosed with a secondary cancer, sarcoma. Uh, it was a grade five, highly aggressive, and uh, they did surgery, removed it from my leg, and, um, and a large portion of my leg, unfortunately, along with it. I'm a little nervous. Um, eight weeks of radiation, five days a week, and there were days when getting up wasn't probably the greatest idea in the world. <laughs> it hurt. But uh, I came through it, the tests were coming back clear, and I go back every three months for checks. But what I want to th thank everyone here, my church family, who's been with me every step of the way. They've spoken to me, they provided support and help for me and my family. And I thank God that you all are here and been so great and so kind. I just can't express how much that has meant to us. It's, you all just wonderful. Thank you, Rick. God bless you, my brother. Wow. Someone else? Peggy? I hope I can say this. Um, I'm Peggy McClure. And uh, in recent weeks, I've had a lot of quiet time with God. Um, asking him a lot of questions. And uh, overwhelmingly, I've been hearing the voice of God tell me to love people in ways that you've never loved them before. I don't quite know what that looks like yet, but I'm listening. And I also want to say to you all, I don't know how we would have gotten through the last few weeks without the love of this church family. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Someone else? God is calling. Brandon? Okay. Um, good morning. For the past 13 years, I've worked in state government, um, and actually, I, don't know, I haven't told Dr. Phil this, but one of his sermons actually started some provoking thoughts for me, and that was the sermon, I don't remember all the scriptures, sorry, Dr. Phil, um, <laughs> told you was, to write them down. <laughs> was all about love, and the key point was um, the best use of time is love, and the best time to love is now, and for me, my career wasn't really fulfilling that for me. I didn't feel like that was the best use of my time and it wasn't allowing me to love. So I had a lot of prayer about it. Um, and when you pray to God, you, you know, you have to be prepared to listen. And that's, that's the hard part, right? Praying sometimes is easy. Listening and following through is harder. And I felt a real calling to change jobs, um, go back to school, all these things that are completely irrational, which don't mess with me if you know me. Um, and, you know, I basically have put faith in that and said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll do that. And I think that's what we have to do when we look at God's purpose. So I would just encourage you to, to really ask, sincerely ask, but be prepared to listen, even if you don't really like the answer, because it may not match. It's not the easiest road. So, I mean, as you heard earlier, in next month, I guess, I'll be teaching kindergarten, which is a huge huge shift for me, but I'm very excited about it, and all along the way, God has continued to, to answer those prayers of what is the best use of my time, and how can that be devoted to love? Wow. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> and, we will, and we will pray for you. Well, this, that's a big undertaking. <laughs> that is a calling. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Danny? I'm Danny Garland. Um, I'm going to talk about two calls I've had. Um, I, there's been more, but I'll just talk about two. Um, first thing, uh, normally when I was nine years old, we moved to Frankfurt and we joined this church. And that was a long time ago. And um, I was, we came all the time. I was in youth group. Um, then I got married and had children and worked about three or four jobs at a time. And Sunday morning was a time to go get um, cinnamon rolls and come home and read the paper. And one Sunday, we went to Sunday school. I, took, I had three small children, Julie, my middle one, 
we went to Sunday school, and I said, okay, that was nice to do. Well, next Sunday came along, and she said, I want to go back to Sunday school. I want to be in Miss Harbison's class. And so that started a run of getting back into church and going to Sunday school because I couldn't bring her down to Sunday school and drive back home. I didn't have that much money to buy gas, gasoline to do all that. So we started several years of um, Tanya, appropriate today, giving attendance pens, perfect attendance pens, then on promotion Sunday. So it was several years we had three with perfect attendance. And that was a call. We got back involved in the church. And while I was involved in the church, a fellow named Mason Winkler, who was youth group at the time, a lot of you remember Mason, probably all of you remember him. And Mason was just a, a hearty, positive guy and he would see me every once in a while he'd say you know you need to come in and work with the youth so and I said I don't have time Mason don't have time. and he was persistent he he called me somebody called me it probably wasn't Mason but it was through Mason I got calls and That's eventually right. I became youth director here and it that changed my life and it's been interesting uh, as youth groups go we I just inherited from Mason a fantastic youth group, and several of you are right here that today. There are Don and Mark and Diana, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but, but uh, a lot of people, the Epley's children, uh, many of you uh, have got ties to those kids then. And it does my heart good now because I've seen a calling for our youth group today mm -hmm. and the, uh, Greg and, and his Miss, wife, Miss, uh, Missy, uh, they're called and it makes a big difference it makes a big difference in our church and that's another example of calling thank you thank you Danny good word yeah God been dealing with somebody else Got time for a couple more okay thank you Don <laughs> meet, meet in the middle there that'd be good for those of you that don't know me, I'm Theo Wells. I've been in Frankfurt since October, um, and it was a leap of faith that brought me here. God never puts you where you want to be. He puts you where he needs you. And I had hit a point in my life where things weren't going well. I kept getting roadblocked at every turn, and so I said, God, you're going to send me where you need me to go, and I'm just going to do it. I may not like where I end up, but it's your choice. So we're going to roll with it. And I ended up here. And I remember my first Sunday at this church, I was welcomed with so much love just because I breathe air, which is awesome. <laughs> um, I have a small person who's with my parents this weekend, but you guys love him like he's a part of your family. And anyone that's encountered my little man, my Eli, will say that he's just this crazy, bright ball of energy and sunshine. And he's grown up so much with a huge village of people that don't know him from the kid on the street, but love him just because he breathes air. And like I said, God puts us never where we need to be, where we think we need to be. It's always where he knows we need to be. And he makes it so much just worth it. And it's been a really awesome journey. And we're still just writing it out and seeing what happens. So thank you guys for showing the love that we're called to do and the, just the love that Jesus expects out of us. So you guys are awesome and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Thea. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Behind you there, Tanya. Abby? Several years ago, I felt um, strongly called. God actually spoke to me about doing the yard sale for the youth. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows that I couldn't sell ice on the equator. <laughs> and so it was amazing. Once God put that burden on my heart, the amount of organization that came out of this church to support it and I just wanted to say how grateful I am to be able to host the yard sale Joe and I 
enjoy it. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work. It's in steamy weather, often rainy. It's amazing how much rain we have this week, every August. But the donations, the support, um, things like the, the drinks and ice, the people who come out and work for a few hours, uh, it all works to his good purpose and allows our youth to um, do their missions and have activities. And I really appreciate the support. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Abby. Wow. Thank you and Joe for doing that. John? Thank you uh, for doing all this. And uh, I love my family, too. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, Mama. God bless you, buddy. Oh, I love you. I don't want to quench the spirit here. Does anybody else want to share? Got a thought? I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Kim, Cameron Kenner to come and share. I've asked him to talk about a call, and uh, Cameron is one of our senior, or one of our entering college. Actually, Cameron's already started in Georgetown. And uh, we welcome you, my brother. Come and share with us today, will you? Good morning. <laughs> One more time, okay. So, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Cameron Kenner, and I have basically been in this church my entire life. Yeah. Um, so, all 18 years, and it's been very interesting the entire time, and um, I kind of was feeling that was feeling kind of sentimental I guess about leaving and I just felt really called to come here and give you guys kind of my l leaving thoughts I guess and so I just hope that you kind of listen uh, listen take I'm go I'm going to challenge you to do something too I'm not trying to give you too much homework but there's a, there's one thing that I really want to ask you guys to do and so you'll hit you'll you'll see it and uh, but most of all I want this to kind of be entertaining and I want you guys to have fun with it because it's supposed to be funny so I hope that works out I don't know for sure we'll, we'll just we'll just see all right but most of it is going to be through sharing some recent experiences of mine and to start with I'm going to talk about the um, that my family and I took a trip to California this summer to go see my sister and my brother out in Santa Barbara and uh, many of you may be wondering um, Cameron how was the trip and that's really interesting because this trip really tested the limit to which a group of people can yell at and get mad at each other and still be able to say that it was awesome and that we loved every second of it. You see, we were bickering the entire time. It was constant, but that wasn't the problem. I mean, it was a problem, but it wasn't the main problem. The main problem was kind of the most inopportune times that we found ourselves bickering at. Uh, for example, at one point, we were walking through this parking garage in Las Vegas. We had just driven for hours and hours and it was the hottest month on record there it was like 110 that day and it was like you opened up an oven and winds just came right into your face singeing off your eyebrows it was awful and so we were walking through this parking garage me and my dad and my brother were kind of leading the way and uh, we could see the hotel in our sights we can almost reach it and then my, and then we hear my mom pipe up behind us saying I can't find my phone <laughs> this is this is kind of common but all three of us at the same time, all three of us at the same time went, ugh, and it was like a studio audience or something, and so, but we found it after like five minutes of searching through bags, it was in her purse, of course, anyway, but, but, but it was fine, and um, my brother, he was the navigator for most of the trip, and it seemed like as the trip wore on, he gave less directions and more highly aggressive orders, um, my dad at one point was, was so sick of driving that he said they should move the Hoover Dam <laughs> closer to Las Vegas so we didn't have to drive so much. Now I don't know, I don't know who would have done that, whatever. Um, but it was, it was all well worth it because we got to spend some very precious and fleeting time together again as a family. You see, we're going to be scattered even farther across the bluegrass soon and, and with my sister and my new brother out in California for the seeable future, I don't really know when we're going to get these opportunities again. So many of you know this pain and many of you will come to experience it. And uh, so it's been kind of hard, but new experiences were the trend of the trip. Um, for uh, One of them was flying 
and I've learned that I'm not really a big fan of flying. Uh, <laughs> it, the convenience was great, but it didn't really help my confidence when we were taking off on my very first flight that, that we hit a patch of turbulence. And so we, hit, we, were, fly, we were flying, we hit this patch of turbulence, and then our pl the plane kind of dipped. Now, it, it, didn't, it probably didn't look like that, it probably did, but it felt, it felt a whole lot like that. And um, so the plane dipped, and then everyone, is, you know when you go over a hill in the car and your stomach kind of just decides it wants to be in your throat now? It, it was that experience. But by the grace of God, we made it there and back safely. And uh, by the third flight, I had quit saying the 23rd Psalms repeatedly, <laughs> and now was only saying it occasionally under my breath. And so, but one thing I did do during the trip was to write in this, and for those of you who don't know what this is, this is what I lovingly refer to as my life. And it's where I basically write everything down that I need to remember or that I'm thinking about, and it's essentially what kept me afloat during the school year and all this stuff. And so, in particular, I was making a list of all the classes I wanted to or needed to take while in college. And that's because my plan in life is to plan out everything that I can plan and then be ready to throw out the plan if everything does not go to plan. And so I was, making a I was making a list of every class, of every semester, of every year. I made, contingent I made um, majors and minors with all the core content classes, other, elect of other requirements and electives, and contingency plans if classes weren't offered. I went through all of this, and by the way, I would s highly recommend you trying to plan out your life when you think you're closest to losing it. It's, it's exhilarating, it just kind of gets your mind going, but my mind, I don't need that anymore, my mind inevitably wanders to kind of thinking of all of the, of the first that will be coming up in these months, and conversely all the last that I've experienced in the previous months. And um, thinking of all the things that I'm like coming to and going from, thinking of all the people that I hope desperately to stay in touch with, yet deep down I know that we'll grow apart, thinking of all the things that this church, that this second family has brought to me, uh, every magical, every youth trip, every Sunday school lesson, every concert, every Sunday service, every conversation with Jack Wayne or Phil, every Wednesday night, every chair I've moved, every table I've rolled, every kid I've played with, every high five I've given, every prayer I've said, every hymn I've heard Roy play, taking it all in. And then we begin to land, and so I have to focus on not panicking too much about that. So I kind of put it in the back of my brain and didn't really think about it again until uh, we went to our inner youth trip to Lake Junaleska. And while we were there, we talked and uh, talked and heard about so many different things. But one message really spoke to me to share today, and that was a spoken word poem by one of the um, counselors there. His name was Lo Alman. So if you're like writing stuff down, I would I would write down that name because he was, he was an amazing person, an even better poet, and so he's got a bunch of poetry online that you can look up, and so he, it was just amazing. I'll spell it for you, L-O-A-L-A-M-A-N, Lo Alman. I thought it was interesting, his name is Lo, but he's actually quite tall. Um, regardless of that though, he gave one poem that was, that was so impactful to me, it really spoke to me for, you, for me to share today, and that was about my generation about how is my generation going to be remembered? Is our time on earth going to be categorized by which dance move is being popularized at that time? Is our worth to the world going to be determined by our posts and our snaps and our, and our tweets? Is our, is our generation going to be only remembered by, as the group that made and obsessed over Pokemon Go? Or are we going to be remembered as something deeper, something more? It was an amazing message to a group of hundreds of young people, and, but it was immediately followed by the guy who was preaching that entire week. He stood up and started talking about how my generation is making all of the wrong decisions, how we are looking up to the wrong people, how we're looking for truth in all of the wrong places, and I really wanted to stand up and say, No! Stop! Rewind! Because I can tell you that that is not the problem. We're not making the wrong decisions on purpose. We're not looking up to the wrong people by choice. We are not looking, uh, looking for truth in all of the wrong places. We don't always know where to look. It's like a much too realistic game of Minesweeper. Kind of pressing the buttons, just hoping, hoping that there's not a bomb there. And so 
we don't always look up to the right people because we haven't really been exposed to enough of the good role models for us to have proper standards for who we want to become and what we want to do and how our actions are perceived by others. We don't always make the right decisions because not only as kids are we entirely flawed and imperfect, but also because we have not yet been exposed to those decision-making skills and those morals to know the right choice from the wrong choice. More or less, all of us learn from our mistakes and, be, and learning the right decisions over time, which we have lacked so far. But too many times have I heard people dog on and put down my generation saying how it's the worst, how we're never going to be good adults, how we'll never solve the world's problems. And I just always think, if they feel strongly enough to, tell, uh, to say this about us, then why aren't they strong, and strong enough and courageous enough to help us figure it out? We, um, if you think we are missing something, please tell us, because we will take everything that we can get. Last time I was at youth, I, I looked around at all the different faces that were there, and I realized that many of them did not regularly attend a church service. And essentially, the youth was all they knew about the church, and um, Craig and Missy were the only adults that they really met and even though I love them and that they do a great job, I can tell you from experience that that is only scratching the surface of what this church has to offer. There are so many good role models and amazing human beings that these kids will never meet. We, and that is what I'm challenging you here today. Whether it's just coming to youth and uh, introducing yourself and hanging out with us, you can make such a huge impact just because of the connections that we will make to you. Um, even if you don't see yourself as kind of the person who we should look up to, you coming and sharing your mistakes and kind of talking us through our problems is only going to make us better. In the book of Titus, Paul is writing to this individual named Titus, and he's giving him advice on how to deal with false teachings in the church. And what he says in this book really becomes key to Christian ed education through even now. And so in Titus 2, 6 through 8, Paul says, Likewise, encourage the young men to be sensible in every way. Offer yourself as a role model of good action. Show integrity, seriousness, and a sound message that is above criticism when you teach. What we learn here is so very important because we can teach all of our young people how to recognize good versus bad in the Bible, but unless we help them realize how to apply this to their, to their life and recognize good versus bad in their lives and in the real world, then what good is teaching them the Bible? We can't do this without real world applications from real people. We are called to help each other in every way possible. And this is one of those ways that we should all be involved in. And it also works conversely for you because I can tell you that if you come and come to us and visit, you will have the time of your life and want to come back. So not only is it a win for the youth, it's also a win for you. It's also a win for our community and the world because the minute that we begin to give everything that we have to offer to our kids in youth ministry is the moment that we start seeing change and it pays dividends for the future. And by change, I mean that we're encouraging forgiveness rather than hate. We're applauding humility rather than bullying. We're giving freedom rather than restriction. We're praising truth rather than lies. And we're, and we're teaching grace rather than condemnation. This is what our youth needs. This is what our church needs. And this is what our world needs. So please, get involved. Help us out because all too quickly, these youth will be sitting back remembering everything that this church, this second family, has brought to them. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Cam Cameron, and certainly we will remember you in school and pray and, uh, and all of our graduates as they leave. And, uh, you know, friends, you've heard it. 
God did not put us here on earth just to take up space, get a job, make some money, retire and die. There's more to life than that. And I've told you before, I'm convinced that every one of us has a purpose to, a ful to fulfill a, God ca a spiritual calling in our life. You heard the scriptures today. You've heard Cameron, you've heard uh, and uh, Alex and others uh, share today. I think about Samuel. Samuel heard somebody calling him over and over. And every time he was convinced it was just Eli. But with Eli's help, Samuel finally realized it was God. Philip was discovered by Jesus and Jesus called him to follow. And then Philip found Nathaniel. Friends, in 1966, on a cold winter day, I was helping my dad in his shop, wood shop downstairs, and he turned off the sound of that loud uh, table saw, and in the quietness of that place, he looked at me and he said, Son, is God calling you? My family, listen, we've heard these stories, and... Uh, I guess my question is exactly what we saw earlier on the video. Is God calling us today? Is God calling some of you today to be the conduit to connect somebody else with God? Is God calling you to respond to his desire for your life? I want to invite our singers to come and we're going to start to share a closing hymn. A hymn that I think most of you know called Softly and Tenderly. And um, as we sing this song today, I want to invite you to, to just pray for a moment. We're not going to stay here for much longer. But I want to invite the choir to come up and then uh, and, and our GNN band. And, and I want us to share just, just in prayer. Just, just pray where you are right now. Just bow your heads and ask God, are you calling me? and we respond to your call. Take us now into the world and may your peace that passes all understanding abide with us now 
and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and greet one another before you go.